When I was six, I saw my cousin playing The Sims 2 at a family thing, and I wanted to make my cats on it, so she let me play around with it. I made a cute couple, but accidentally made them woohoo, and since I was six and always told that sex was bad, I freaked out and shut the laptop. Luckily, it was time for lunch, so I just left it and ate. When I came back a few hours later, the mum was dead, there was a toddler crying in a puddle in front of an artie, so every breakable thing was broken, and the dad was just relaxing on his front lawn wearing a llama costume. I never played it again. The Sims, the fun life simulator game where you can do whatever you want. People have even made me. And you know, I thought I used to be evil and edgy as a kid, making Sims torch their houses with fireworks, until I compared that to some of the confessions on Reddit. Well, I- I'll warn you now, these are worse. I made a guy with the neurotic and neat traits. I put him in a fence in the middle of the kitchen with a lawn sprinkler going. He would frantically mop up the water every time the sprinkler splashed the floor. Eventually, began passing out and pissing himself. I left him in there until he mopped himself to death. I was starving my sim and he sneakily called up for a pizza. When it was delivered I made him throw it in the garbage. Then he cried. My daughter has developed her evil side nicely with the game. Her favourite was to set up a zoo of sims all locked into their own rooms with full windows so visitors could watch. Analogue disapproving face emoji. I burned the house down while attempting to make two of them have gay sex. I managed to get two of them to kiss and fall in love but in the background, the mother is just screaming, and I'm like, oh shit, is she homophobic? After changing the camera angle, I find out, oh no, 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 the house is on fire. I was always too lazy to actually build my own home from scratch, and so whenever I started a new file, my immediate goal was to move into the nicest house already on the map. I had an affair with the lady of the house, convinced her to divorce her husband, married her, moved into the house, knocked her up for good measure, divorced her, and kicked her out of the house. Can't you just go to Townview, evict the family living there and then move in. Where's the fun in that? I impregnated my girlfriend's daughter, married my girlfriend and technically had a child with my stepdaughter. You're still talking about the Sims, right? I made my Sims sleep with all the women in the neighbourhood and abandoned the bastard children to be raised by the mother's families. Here is the uh, family tree. Was obviously a bit gay. Didn't realise this at the time, but my Sims games should have been a dead giveaway. Lesbians everywhere. All lesbians. Lesbians with kids. Best friends living together, super hot female celebrities woohooing it up by the water slide, entire town was a veritable lesbian paradise. Except for one guy. Imagine this, you are a perfectly attractive young man who moves to the centre of Clungeville, but because your malevolent sapphic creator is working out her issues, all pussy is off limits. I'm sorry, Greg. Once made a normal sim and went about his natural life, except he always hated this one other sim. They loathed each other with a passion. So I tracked down his granddaughter, convinced her to move in along with his nemesis, and trapped him in a small room next to their bedroom. I put up a full wall mirror to simulate a one-way mirror and my sim spent the rest of his life making woohoo with his enemy's granddaughter while he watched from the next room. Jesus! Made a cult! I made a handsome sim and had him steal several women who were locked in an underground facility. He would talk and have little dates to see which one he liked the most. The others were executed by electrocution. My brother made a breeding complex in The Sims 2 using restroom doors reversed to cull males and female children into chambers. Males were led to a pool without a ladder, and females were cycled back to the breeding chamber. I was at firefighter training for 18 weeks and came back to that. This sim robbed my sim's house, so I got my sim to befriend him, make him fall in love, cheat on his wife and family, and ditch them to marry my sim. Then I invited his mother and father and ex-wife and his kids to my place for a barbecue. I ended up burning him and all his family and ex-wife in a room filled with carpets and fireplaces. No doubt doors or windows, my sim sat on a mezzanine, looking down into the carnage below. Don't rob my sim's house! I recently found out you can kill old sims by overexertion in The Sims 4. My sim's going around town fucking all the old people to death, and once death shows up, she proceeds to make friends with him. I'm counting up graves until my sim can bang death. I managed to get a uh, heat of the moment kiss in on him. One time I killed a sim by drowning, then I made everyone show up to his funeral in swimwear. I put the phone too close to the stove. When it caught fire, they tried to call 911, but just burned to death reaching for the phone. I'd host a fake realty show with my sims called Who Dies First?
four sims on an empty lot, starve them to death, Winnie would get a house. You watch, give it a year, Netflix will have that. When I have no simoleons left, I'd invite neighbours to a party, trap them, let them die and sell their urns so I could buy pizza. Oh no. Sims 1 Deluxe, I'd at least like 200 graves, I had the largest lot in the game and filled every space with a tomb except for the swimming pool used to kill them. I was 10. Yeah, my friend and I did something similar to this, but we made a lone man, a groundskeeper of the town graveyard. Every night, six to 12 ghosts would torment the man in his little shack. It went on for about four weeks, then one day went to bed and slept for five days. Please, look at my creation. It's my Sim Mausoleum. Right, uh, how are you doing? Yeah, fine. Yeah. At E3, the first year it was shown, I went on the demo unit and killed off all the Sims. Right afterwards, a camera crew came to record a segment on the game and the PR person freaked out because they didn't know what to do about the dead Sims. PR person. And here we have the, oh my god, they're all dead. I used to work on the game. While developing the Sims 1 expansion pack, Making Magic, we discovered that cars had always been flagged as flammable, but never caught fire because of the natural fire break of the sidewalks. We found this out when someone's misbehaving baby dragon walked out into traffic, torched the school bus, and all the neighbourhood kids stumbled off the bus in flames. I admit to testing this a few times after it was discovered, but before it was fixed, I had a normal suburban family. Nice house, two kids, the works. Except they also had a secret child they kept locked in a room in the basement with nothing but a sink. They only ever visited him to bring him a plate of old terrible food once in a while and to taunt him. Bloody, that's a bit much even for me. I briefly fell asleep while playing, and when I awoke, child protection services had taken the child away like the parents were gaming. I remember reading somewhere that someone let child protective services take their child because it was ugly. Oh, you're thinking of this post! I had two very attractive sims, and they had a baby, but the kid was hideous, so I had it taken away. Then they had a daughter, and she was beautiful, but once she started school, she brought a friend home. It was the first kid. They say GTA is a bad game, desensitising us all. Just look at this. I trapped a little girl in a room full of gnomes and she slowly starved in a puddle of piss. I added her to my collection of graves. In the first Sims, I discovered making gnomes and selling them, or gnoming as I called it, was more profitable than having a career. So I built a sweatshop in the back of my house and had six employees making gnomes almost non-stop. There was happy music playing to keep their spirits up and they were allowed to sleep to make sure they continued making gnomes. There were no doors to this room. My sim then lived in luxury. Well, this reminds me of the famous paint goblin strategy, where you make a green-skinned sim, lock them underground, make them endlessly paint, and sell their work for big money. My family always ends up feeling blessed because of their fortune, and they never find out about the horrible secret living beneath their home, but I prefer this. With my starting money, I was able to build a workroom and a separate bedroom for the slave master. A close-up of my work area. Looks like my previous job. Uh, this is where I forced the slaves to write books and screenplays to publish. So each morning I would collect a large sum of royalties. Oh yeah, I made them all wear hot dog suits. One of my slaves, a Mopin, somehow died within 20 minutes. He was let off easy, I guess. I accidentally locked in my maid when she came to clean up all the crap these hot dogs have been making. She uh, started going crazy and took her clothes off. This is what a pregnant hot dog looks like. This kid will never go to school. He will work for me until death. I would train my son to be a good enough painter to do screenshot paintings. I then forced him to paint me naked or having sex with his mother stroke other women. I hung the paintings everywhere. I had a sim befriend neighbours, take them down to his basement, build a chain link fence cell around them, and then he would take photos of them sobbing. He then sold those to other sims, including to people related to the kidnapped ones, at his private art gallery. The fact that we're separated by the internet makes me feel safe. I drowned one of my sims in a pool while her mother stood at the side and took pictures. Then I put all of the pictures on the wall of her bedroom and kept making the mother 
look at them. Hey. I used to make a huge maze to the toilet and fill the walls with art. They'd start walking towards the toilet, stop and look at the art like, wow, well, this is cool. They'd start walking to the toilet, piss themselves and cry and then stop and look at the art like, oh, wow, well, th- th- this is pretty good too. Again, reminds me of this creation. The carpool will arrive in one hour. Sim takes seven hours to reach street and running. Sim passes out twice, pisses himself once along the way, finishes last hour of shift, heads home, walks the whole way back as around a 14 hour trip, walks through the front door. The carpool will arrive in one hour. I once created a sim named the God of Rock. I dressed him up like Zeus and put him in an opulently decorated labyrinthine mansion with the only item in it being a guitar at the centre. I made him play every hour of every day until he'd pass out. I don't remember how it ended but I swear to god I heard him play a lick from Stairway to Heaven once. My sim was the Emperor of Evil and therefore made enemies just by being near people regularly. Uh, This was The Sims 3, so I bought him the legendary host aspiration reward, which meant that every time he threw a party, one, all invited guests would show up, two, they would always have a great time. Every week he'd invite the person he liked least and their entire family to a party, and they'd ring the doorbell and come into the giant party hall, which was packed with elaborate rugs and plants, and also lined with fireplaces. Then I turned on the classical music from the speakers and watched as all the guests panicked as they, their family, burned to death in the hall. Any survivors who managed to get out had to tell their host how great the party was before they could go, and they also had to show up again when he invited them the next week. I imprisoned a Sam in a personal basement with everything he hated. He didn't like to look at himself instead of walls he had mirrors. He hated animals, I put a bunch of dogs in his room. He hated art, I made him constantly paint and and sculpt. I felt like a horrible monster, but yeah. I enjoy it. I locked a guy on a one by one square, then kept building it forward, and as he walked I would delete the walls behind him and keep building, so he kept walking in circles, going nowhere. I used to love making my sim go to work in nothing but his speedos. Made a vegetarian sim, would only cook burgers for him. Locking a 12 year old girl in a windowless room with a travelling rodeo clown. Starve him to death, electrocute them, drown them, watch them burn in a fire, (laughs) send their kid to military school. Um, I put a juke box on a platform and set it to country out of his reach. I killed my teenage son because he had really small arms. In Sims 2 there was a slider glitch in the creator so I made a few families of grotesque Sims and it's true whether by bug or design there are some truly disturbing things to be made in the Sims. Cheeks that were five feet wide, eyes three feet tall etc. My sister had some Sims in the same neighbourhood, more specifically her, her three friends and their four or crushes all in the same house. She got pissed that my fucked up sims would come over to say hi when she was playing. After that I made an effort to have my sims infiltrate her and her friends bloodlines. I slowly developed relationships between the families and eventually started a new generation. My sister's reaction to her sims new romance and bastard children was priceless. The children all had cheeks three feet wide and either super large or tiny eyes. Ten out of ten would really Live that moment again. My sister went on my account and drowned my whole family in the pool. I didn't let them sleep, forced them to swim till they died. I was like six. Every time I bring it up today, she laughs maniacally. She's a lawyer. At work, we had a boss nobody could stand. He was mean spirited, argumentative, and just a, 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 ge- a general pain in the ass. I went to a party and the host was messing around with the Sims, and we decided to make a Sim of the boss and torture him in Sim ways, making him pee himself, lock him in a room till he goes crazy. I was eventually setting him on fire. It was very cathartic and we were having a good laugh until one of our co-workers burst into tears because she was dating him and uh, we just burned Jim in virtual effigy. Oops, tell me about it. My dad and brother saw me burn one old lady in a death room over a decade ago and still bring it up to this day. So, Canel, what's the worst thing you've done in The Sims? I want to set up a sim to have my exact life. The sim spent all the time crying analogue confused face emoji. I stopped playing after that.